Today we're going to be talking about macros. Um, they're pretty simple uh, once you kind of understand how they work. So I've already gone ahead and made a couple macros while I was testing this out. Um, and we'll be taking a look at them in particular. So the first one I'd like to take a look at, I actually have them in my toolbar down here. If you go to your macros tab, you can select in bar. And if you look down here, they'll show up. You can right click on them and change their colors if you'd like. So we're gonna go back to the chat pad so we can see everything. So when I select this macro, party HP, it will query all of your character sheets and show me the HP of all of your characters. So I have one for each character, plus I've added temporary hit points for Erica's character since she uses them a lot. But another thing, another way we can pull this up is just the hashtag number sign party HP, and that will also run the macro. As you can see, it's each character's current HP opposed to their maximum HP. So the way that we've done this is looks really complicated, but I promise it's not as complicated as it looks. Why don't we go ahead and make it? So we're going to call it party HP two, because this is the second one. So the first thing we're going to do, we want it to look like this, where it's got this big purple bar and it lists everything nice and clean and simple. So we're going to use the default template. There are other templates, but the syntax for each of them is different. This one is a simple like Excel table, basically. So we're going to be using this one primarily. So first we're going to start off by ampersand template default. And that's going to tell it to pull the default template. Uh, that's what that ampersand means call to. And then the name of the table, we'll put it as current party hit points. Now we're doing double curly braces here so that when it runs this macro, it will display the name of this table, current party HP up here at the top. And then we're going to move on to pulling the actual information. So for Therior's character, we'll put in Therior equals. And then to call the information from Therior's character sheet, we'll use the at sign, another curly brace. We'll type in his character sheet, his character's name, and then a pipe. So it's going to Therior's character sheet to pick up what information? HP. We'll go ahead and end the curly brace and space. Whenever you call something from a character sheet, it needs to have a space in front and behind it. Next, we'll put in a slash. So it will display a slash. And then we'll do the same thing. What information are we pulling again? Or from where? We're pulling it from Therior, his character sheet, we're pulling what? HP and what exactly? Max. So as you can see, we now have a default template, which will display the name current party HP. And the first value that will roll the first line will be Therior. And on that line, we'll have the HP from Therior's character sheet and the HP max from Therior's character sheet. So let's test it out didn't work. Why didn't it work? Because we forgot to put the ending curly braces. See, and now it displays. Now, that's pretty much it. You don't want to be using enter. Um, but sometimes I do use it. Like in this case, we can make nice big areas where we can edit this information. And we'll just choose another character, Masa, because her character is really easy to type. And then we'll just paste in that information. If we delete 
all of those enters and test it, now we have Moss's information in here as well. And you can keep doing this. This is just a, an easy way to pull information. Um, I'm actually not even going to save it. Returning to the macro I built for this, you can see again, we have a default template. Name is current party HP. And in that table, it is going to show us line Therior using the HP value from Therior's character sheet compared against the HP maximum value on Therior's character sheet. This same process is repeated for each of the characters. I've also added one in here that uses temporary hit points because that character uses them a lot. Um, but it does the exact same thing. In this case, I have it just displaying the temporary hit points on both sides because there is no maximum temporary hit point. But it didn't look right when it was just a single number, so I added, uh, you can actually see it up here, I added the, the value on both sides of it, just so that it's nice and simple. Um, and we've done it for each of the characters. One of the confusing parts, and you might notice it here on the very end, with our Trevor character, um, you have to use the precise name from the character sheet. So in this case, Trevor's actual full name is Trevor Grashalt space, parentheses, tepish, parentheses. So that gets a little annoying with the macros. Um, so keep that in mind when you name your characters. And if you change your characters' names, um, it will break the macros. So please don't do that. Next up, I made another macro. This one is for the party as well. And it's called Healing Potions. So in here, we are going to be selecting an input value. You can choose each of the different types of healing potion. We'll roll a common healing potion and it will say healing potion, common healing potion used, and then it will give me the value of HP recovered. In this case, it rolled two D4 plus two. So the way that you build that You don't want to put spaces in your titles because this is the way that you will like call them forth with their with the number signs. So again, we're going to be using the default template. Um, I don't know the syntax for the other templates yet. The name, by the way, if you put in a capital M, it will display name equals. If you put in a, it will, a lowercase n, it will only display the information after the equal sign. So we've made our table, named it Healing Potion, using the default template. What we need to do now is query it, cause it to query the user. So we've got a, a question here, input value, what potion type are you going to use? and it has the options for potion types. And if you use different types, as you can see, this is 4d4 plus 4, this is 2d4 plus 2, this is 10d4 plus 20. It will utilize the correct uh, calculation. So what we're going to do is, in brackets, always, we're going to do question mark. What is it querying? Curly brace potion type. Draken. Now we need to provide it with options. We'll do a pipe is how you determine different options in the menu, in the drop down. So we'll do pipe common. And we can fill this out with the other things. And then don't forget, we need to end our query and we need to end this line. So if we test the macro, it will cause us to do this. We can select that and it will just display greater. Not super useful, huh? So let's start adding in the calculations. So for a common, 
what we're doing is creating a box. It's called an inline roll. So all that it requires is regular square brackets on both sides, double on both sides. And then you just put in the numbers, the calculation. So in this case, a common is 2d4 plus 2. A greater is 2d4, excuse me, is 4d4 plus 4. A superior is 8d4 plus 8. And a supreme is 10d4 plus 20. Oh, I forgot. Now that we have those calculations in, the last thing you need to do to make it work is to add a comma between common and its calculation. This will cause the macro to run the calculation that you selected and display the value in line rolling in this box. So if you want it to uh, look a little better, you can go in and add a message. Common healing potion used. Inline roll, HP recovered. And as you can see down here, it tells us a common healing potion was used and the inline roll, HP recovered. So we'll go ahead and just copy this message and add it here and here. And I'm going to put a space after each calculation. So we've got everything here. We can do that. Boom. Oh, I forgot to do HP recovered after the calculation. So I'll grab that now. Pop it in. And there we go. Wow, I rolled a lot of ones on that. But the point is, it's now showing exactly what we need it to on each type of potion. We've got all four here. They're all displaying properly and they look good and it's easy. Now, the big thing here to understand is that you can't actually um, using macros. You can use it. You can use the API, um, but I'm not going to get into the API. Um, you can't actually cause it to inject this information onto the player's character sheet. So all this does is just roll the dice for you, which, you know, is useful. It's definitely better than having to manually type it in yourself. And so there we go. I'll show off the last kind of macro. And that is in, if you go to a character's character sheet, you can see it here. This is our, our ranger character. And our ranger is a monster slayer. So he gets special bonuses against beasts. And he gets um, different kinds of things like slayer's prey here. And then under the spells, he also has hunter's mark. And hunter's mark is just another spell. And it just adds... Um, another d6. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a macro that does this. On this player's side, they can put it in their macro bar. Um, but I can also access it here because I'm the DM. Whenever they roll, it's going to request an input. And here are the options. We've got Hunter's Mark, Slayer's Prey, 
both Hunter's Mark favorite enemy, Slayer's Prey favorite enemy, or both favorite enemy. I'm going to go ahead and do the both favorite enemy so I can go over the full calculation, and then you can uh, hopefully break down the individual calculations from that. So here we go. We've got a table that populates with the title Drill Attacks, and the, the first line is with Hunter's Mark and Slayer's Prey and Favorite Enemy, the attack deals 24. So as you can see here, we've got one, he's a plus one weapon, he gets plus two for Favorite Enemy, he gets 1d8 for the bow attack, 2d6 for Hunter's Mark and for Slayer's Prey, both of them combined, and three, which is his dexterity modifier. And you can see the calculation there below it is one plus two plus 1d6 plus 2d6 plus three. It sounds complicated, but don't worry. It's very complicated. But we're gonna break it down, make it nice and easy. So first off, this is a default template. You guys know that one, default template. It's the purple bordered ugly thing, uh, but it works. Um, we're gonna be using a default temp template table with the name Jural Attacks, and you can make that whatever you want. Uh, I chose Drill Attacks because it's the easiest to do. Now, I didn't add in a standard attack because his standard attack can just be rolled on the character sheet with the longbow and the damage. Doesn't need a macro for that. So we've got a default table with the name Drill Attacks, and then we've got a query. Remember, it starts off with a query. See? This is when the brackets start getting really confusing. It really stacks up very quickly. The query, we want it to query the user what combination of spells. The first selection, pipe, Hunter's Mark. If selected, comma, will display with Hunter's Mark the attack deals and then our inline roll to the next pipe. Let's go over the inline roll really quickly because there's another couple things that I've done here. First off, inline rolling is the same as before. Two brackets, one D six plus seven, closing brackets, enter. It will display a number. And since this one is not in a template, it won't display in anything. It'll just display right here in the little box. So we've got our two brackets to indicate our inline roll. And then our first value is one. One, and then this block of text. When you are inline rolling, if you just, let's say, we'll take the base calculation of this inline roll that we're dealing with. 1d8 plus 1d6 plus, and then I don't, I don't have a dexterity mod to pull from here, so we'll go over that in a second, but I'll just put in the dex mod, or a number, and we'll close our brackets. Enter, and look, we roll the dice, but it doesn't tell you what any of the dice are. There's just a zero and a three and a one. What are all those numbers from? How do the calculations actually make sense? And in the game, that comes up quite a lot. So what you can do is add in, in an inline roll, add a bracket and a text in between so that that way, when you roll, it will show one weapon plus zero favorite enemy plus 1d6 damage plus 1d6 damage plus three, the dex modifier. So that's what those brackets with the text in them is. So you won't really need to pay attention to those. You can add those in if you'd like. We've got one plus zero, which is the, the bonus without favorite enemy, plus 1d8, that die roll, an eight-sided die, plus a six-sided die. Both of those are for damage. And then because we've built this macro in Jurl's character sheet, we don't need to call a specific character sheet when we use the at sign. So instead of having to say at jurl pipe dexterity mod, we just have at dexterity mod because this macro has been built into it as an ability on jurl's character sheet. And again, we've just added this little dex to indicate that the value here is the dex modifier. And then all we've done is another pipe and then if the user selects Slayer Prey, 
it will display comma with Slayer's Prey, the attack deals inline roll. And it's the same inline roll as above. In this case, it's actually identical because both of those spells do an additional 1d6 damage. So the, the first two options are identical. And the only reason I've done that is for clarity when you select whatever you select. So it's a lot more obvious which spell is being used and when and why. If you notice these little uh, outlines, if it's red, it means you've, lo you've rolled the minimum on the die, in this case, a one. And if it's green, you've rolled the maximum, in this case, the sixes. If it's blue, you've rolled one of both or multiple of both. Moving on. Now, the, the next one we've done, another pipe. If the user chooses both, comma, it will display, comma, uh, with Hunter's Mark and Slayer's Prey, the attack deals, the same inline roll, but this time we've done 2d6 damage because each spell does 1d6. Finally, because he's a ranger, he also has access to favored enemy and that's something that comes up pretty frequently in our campaign. So I've added in options for adding the favored enemy bonus as well. And that favored enemy bonus changes next level, actually. So Sean, make sure you change that next level. And that is why I labeled each of these as well. When you level up, all you'll need to do to change your favored enemy is go in and the ones with favored enemy, which are the bottom three, all of these down here, with that, all you need to do is go into your, the favorite enemy bonus for each of these, which just happens to be right here. It's the two in this case, and then just change that to at level six, yours changes to a four. Or again, if you get a new weapon, you can go in and add whatever weapon that is. Just make sure you don't uh, mess up any of the pipes. So again, all we've got going on is a default template is going to have table dural attacks, query what combination of spells, options are Hunter's Mark, it will display that information, Slayer's Prey, it will then display that information, with both, it will display that information, with that and with one of them and favorite enemy, the other one and favorite enemy, and then both spells and favorite enemy. It will display that information. And that's all the macro is doing. It's just rolling those dice for us and displaying the information we want it to. In each case, I have asked the macro to display the line and which with each line I have added, it is using Hunter's Mark, Slayer's Prey, and or favored enemy in whichever case. Now, the other kind of macro that I have made on a character sheet, if we go to Therior's character sheet, he is our, our fighter. And if we go to attributes and abilities, you can see we've got second wind. It uses uh, 1d10 plus the fighter's level in healing. Um, so what I've done is we've got a default table again the name of the table is Second Wind. I'll actually add a space in there so that it's uh, not weird looking. And then the th one line on this is Therial Recovers HP. And the value is our inline roll 1d10 plus at level. Since we're not in a care or since we're built into a character sheet here with this macro, we can just put at level. It's going to pull the level from these parameters. There's a level in here somewhere. I don't know where it is. It's, it's hidden in here somewhere. Uh, it's going to pull that parameter and add it to the 1d10. So we can go ahead and use second wind. And here we go. Therial recovers that much HP. Now these macros, the other ones that I made, healing potions and party HP, those I have visible to all players so that everybody can have access to them. And when somebody uses it, it will show 
all of the information for all the players, um, for all the people in the chat. If I didn't have that selected, it would only display for me, uh, which can be useful if you're DMing.